One of the things that uh, you talked about was using the resources that are newly sort of gained in the last year to distribute to the community and distribute to other chapters as well as other black-led organizations. One of the big critiques, though, that has emerged in recent months has been uh, that Black Lives Matter as an organization, the B BLMGM, has not distributed the money properly. Um, you know, we saw a call, for example, when it was an, when it was announced that ninety million dollars had come into Black Lives Matter over the last year. Uh, and by the way, you aren't the only ones who've received large amounts of money. The NAACP uh, 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 Legal Defense Fund also received, I believe, seventy million dollars. We've seen other groups get large amounts of money after the, the uprisings that took place after the killing of George Floyd. But when you all got the ninety million dollars, immediately people said, "Hey, wait a minute, we need." A slice of this. Uh, uh, we, we saw activists in Ferguson, for example, uh, Tory Russell and uh, and Mike Brown Sr. say, hey, we need $20 million as a restorative act. We're not asking for something. This is what we are owed based on what we've contributed to the movement and what our needs are for our organizations right at ground zero. When you hear critiques like that and demands like that, how do you make sense of them? How do you respond to them? I think it's hard. Um, I want to remind people that we just got this money six, eight months ago, um, not that long ago. And um, in that time, we've been able to distribute dollars really quickly. Um, and I do want to say that, you know, um, our community members do need resources. Our community members um, do need support. Um, Black Lives Matter, while we are a grant-making body and an action, um, act tank, think tank, um, we are not a charity. Um, we are a power building body. And so um, it's important that people understand the difference between a charity um, and a power building body. Uh, I also want to say um, I did meet with Mike Brown um, and I met with his wife, Callie, uh, and that was actually um, that meeting was created by um, Uncle Bobby and Auntie B with the Love Not Blood campaign and a truly restorative and transformative justice process. It was really powerful. They sat us down and you can imagine, right, someone who's demanded $20 million from me and the organization. Um, they sat us down, uh, they met us here in California and we had a really amazing conversation about what is needed, how we can actually support and that People don't have to leverage demands against us online. People can contact us. We are accessible. Uh, and so that's what I have to say to folks. I do understand the need for resources. I do understand um, why people uh, expect that from us. But I think it's important that people recognize that um, there are other places that they can also get grants. There are other places that they can also get resources. and. Most importantly, our target should be the United States government. Our target should be calling on, on Congress to pass reparations. Our, our, our target should be calling on Congress to pass the BREATHE Act. Our target should be local um, law enforcement, local city council. Um, we aren't the government. We are an organization that have, has always fought for Black lives and we will always fight for black lives. I, I think one of the challenges is the language of movement. When people hear the language of movement, when people hear grassroots, when people hear community, they're thinking of a very particular thing which inspires calls for mutual aid, for funding, for distributing resources, Panther style, as opposed to in what in many ways has become a fairly traditional organization. Do you see that as a, if not a contradiction, at least a, a, a tension in the work you're doing and the language that's being used to describe the work you're doing? Yes, I, I think it's a tension for all of us. And I think it's a conversation that every black organization that received millions of dollars should be talking about. We have been courageous to have the conversation. Some may think it was dumb of us to be transparent about how much money we received. But I think it was important for us to tell the community, hey, this is the money we received. Um, and I would encourage other Black-led organizations to also share the money they received and talk about how we're using it. Talk about how we define the use of resources in this moment. It is a tension, but it doesn't have to be a place where we fight each other and harm each other. 
we don't have to go down that route. We literally can work together in this moment because we always say this, we are all we got. I have a somewhat philosophical question <laughs> for you in this minute or so I have in this in this in this in this segment. Uh, but I remember when I wrote my book, um, Nobody, which dealt with black state violence. Part of what I thought about was while I wrote this book myself and I am giving speeches about this book, the money that I'm earning is happening because black people died. And so I had to think about my moral responsibility to those people. What's my responsibility to Mike Brown or to Sandra Bland, et cetera? Even though you have not taken a dollar from the Black Lives Matter organization in the salary, your prominence, your name, the speeches you give, the studio deals you get are all connected to the fact that there's so much black trauma and black death. How does that re fact inform how you think about your own personal spending, your own personal politics, and what your responsibility is to the community beyond the base? Beyond the base? It's a great question, and I think about it every day. I don't think it's a question that um, any of us can just have one answer for. But I'll start with saying that, Mark, you know this, and many people know this. I started this work because of my own family, um, because of what happened to my brother, who was tortured and abused by the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department. Um, I started organizing at 16 because I needed an outlet. I needed to express the rage and the disappointment I had in the system. And that led me to being a community organizer. And the role of a community organizer is to help build power. It's to help build power of those of us that are most marginalized. And so I am that family member, that's me. I am the person who's been impacted by the state. I was the person and I continue to be that person who shows up for my own black family who's been impacted and other black families. And I think as long as we live in a capitalist system, it's going to be a tension. And so my job and the job of organizations like Black Lives Matter and so many other black led organizations is that we transform the system so we don't have any more families dealing with what I dealt with. So don't, we don't have any more families dealing with harm and violence every single day.